Hey Vestavia Hills youth, I hope you're doing well. Uh, I hope you all watched uh, Gary's worship service or Gary's sermon in the worship service this morning. Uh, it was really good and really kicked off Holy Week really well. And um, you found out this morning, or you may already know, that Holy Week uh, begins on Palm Sunday. And so I've always been confused about Holy Week because it starts off, Jesus goes into Jerusalem, everybody's making this big celebration, and then by Thursday of that week, they're all screaming, kill him. And I've never understood why that was. How can you decide to love something one second and want, you know, want it to die um, a few days later? It's, it's such a huge change of heart and change of mind. And I think the more we dig into that Palm Sunday passage... Um, that we call Palm Sunday, the triumphal entry passage, the more we begin to understand why people got so mad at, by the end of the week. So I want to start out by reading the passage out of Matthew chapter 21, and then we'll just dig into it. So if you have a Bible, I invite you to follow along. Um, find a Bible. Uh, open your Bible during this time. I think that's really important. And so I'm going to read... Um, Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through, I believe, 11. When they, the disciples and Jesus, had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and the colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road and cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. So you have this huge, great celebration. And everyone's excited that Jesus is here, trying to figure out what's going on. And then by the end of the week, they're all like, crucify him. So what, what's the difference? And I think we have to look at the images of Palm Sunday, the images of this entry, to understand this huge, what I'm going to call misunderstanding, between Jesus and his disciples and the crowds. So first, the first image that we're kind of given is the Mount of Olives. So... Um, quick geography lesson. The Mount of Olives is a mountain that sits over Jerusalem, um, and it's to the east. And so Jesus is traveling east to west. I did this. I don't know if it's actually this way to this way or this way to this way. Or I'm just making you dizzy. Who knows? Um, anyway, so Jesus is going down the mountain uh, looking at the temple. Um, so he, that's what he would be seeing. But just beyond the temple would be Golgotha, where where he would be... Uh, crucified later. So Jesus can see A, the temple, and then B, where he would end up being crucified. And so that's a huge image um, to be able to read into the geography that Jesus is going down the mountain knowing that he is going to end up um, on the cross behind, behind the temple. Um, and so the next image is the idea of a cult. And so Colt, C-O-L-T, not C-U-L-T, um, huge difference, um, or a donkey. So to, to kind of really understand this would be to understand other triumphal entries. So if an army came in and destroyed a city, what they would do is have this great parade, and the lead general would sit on this huge like war horse, this stallion, and just bolster through the city and just show off the riches and the spoils and all the great things that this general conquered. And so Jesus is using that image of coming in 
as a conquering um, a conquering entity, but he's sitting on a young donkey or a, a young horse. Um, it's very not very strong, not very um, commanding. And so that speaks back to this Old Testament passage of um, coming in humble, coming in, um, you know, obedient. And so that image is talking about Jesus isn't coming to conquer um, the physical space, but he's there to win hearts and minds and souls, um, to put people on a course back to God again. And so coming in, you know that something big is happening because of this image of a triumphal entry, but it's not quite what you ex expect because it's on um, a non-commanding, non-impressive um, animal. And so the next image are the branches and the cloaks. And so, you know, you've probably seen in church, you know, kids waving palm branches and this cute, you know, this cute idea of, um, you know, Palm Sunday in this real sanitize this real fun image and so there's a little more to it um this is the symbolized royalty they didn't think the horse that was coming in uh needed to be setting its feet on the ground so people would lay down their own clothes would lay down palms so the the horse wouldn't have to put its hoof in the dirt that's how important um, that's how important the animal versus how important the person riding the animal was. And so we see kids in church, you know, waving palm branches and it's cute and adorable and whatnot. But it's this sign of royalty, that royalty is coming through. And so Jesus is this royalty um, that we don't necessarily expect. He doesn't have that commanding presence like these generals would have. But yet we're treating Jesus as if he is royalty. And so I think that's very important to realize going through this, this passage. And then they shout the word Hosanna. And so um, if you know your Hebrew, which I expect all of you to, um, it comes from the Hebrew word Hashiana, um, which means Hosanna. No one really knows what it means. Um, some people think it means save us, save me. Um, a cry for help. Um, it's used in a couple instances there. I don't think the argument stands, but this isn't a Hebrew class. Um, but anyways, it could mean save us, save me, save us as a people. And so they're waving palm branches to this royalty and screaming, save us. The one who comes in the name of the Lord, save us. And so what are they asking to be saved from? They don't have this post-Easter understanding like you and I have. In fact, um, what I think the misunderstanding that happens here is what ends up getting Jesus killed. It's this understanding that what the crowds wanted was to be removed from Roman control. Jerusalem was under the control of Rome, and this dominant Roman army was just everywhere. If you know anything about Roman, the Roman Empire and Roman history in general, you know how dominant and commanding they were. And so the people thought Jesus was coming in to raise up an army to, um, to, to move Rome out of their holy space. And so that's why the crowds were cheering. That's why they were so happy to think they were going to get their land back. They were going to get their temples back. They were going to get their national identity back. But when Jesus comes in, it is so much more than just land and space and identity. It is souls. It is um, per to be reconnected with the Creator, um, reconnected and in good relationship with God. Um, it is so much more. But you know, we'll see throughout the course of this week, throughout Holy Week, that um, the people just wanted the Roman army out of their out of their space. And when they find out Jesus didn't come to overthrow Rome, they get mad and they turn on them real quick. And so we have to hold these images, what Jesus had intended and what the people had perceived. And how many times does that happen in our lives? That we reread scripture and we think it means one thing about us personally um, getting us through things, but Jesus means 
so much more than that. Jesus is so much more than our sidekick, our buddy, our um, get out of jail card. Um, he's so much more than that. He is the one that connects us to the Father, to our Creator, um, that puts us in right relationship with the one who seeks us. And so we always have to be looking beyond um, the image and seeing the intent behind the image. Know that we are praying for you, and we know that this is a real tough time, and if that you need anything, you can reach out to us, and we'd be happy to talk, happy to share, um, happy to get you in touch with, with whatever resource you may need, if we can find it. Know that we love you and care for you, and God bless you. Amen.